Hey guys, welcome back to Revamp. Today we're continuing with the full link in the Commodore. See, we've got the diff out here on the floor. Obviously, you saw in the last episode we had all the suspension out. We ran through the new full link kit from McDonald Brothers and we basically told you why we are changing it over. We're going to continue on by cutting the brackets off, so I'm going to get straight into that now. Plasma cut is a bit of a new toy for us, and I can tell you if you're doing any heavy cutting on a regular basis, quite a valuable investment to your tool arsenal. So I'm gonna just keep cutting these away, and then obviously we've gotta clean up these brackets afterwards. So I'll get back to you in a minute. All right, so you get the idea. That's one side cleaned off. Obviously, it's got to be cleaned off a little better where we're going to put new welds. But, we've still got a bit to do on the other side. But, we're very close to having it ready to start tacking on some mounts once we get it in position in the car. I've got a new cross member just sitting in there. And you can see that we're going to have a bit of an issue with the exhaust. Hopefully it's an easy modification. It can just come down here, come through here. Since we've got one link arm up here and one right over here. So we're hoping it's not too big of a drama. Our tail shaft's going to be fine in that location. You can see it uses one of the original locations there and one of the original locations there. We do, however, have to make some new holes. You can see I've marked some of them already. And that hardware comes all in the kit. There's another one there. Next step after just marking those bolt holes is just got to drill them out. It's a 716 drill bit. So I've just center punched them. You can see there's two there and two there. Obviously same on the other side. I've just been tightening up some of the fuel lines, brake lines, battery cable, particularly where it's gonna go near the falling cross member. So just tighten them up nice and tight to the floor. So they'll be good when it comes to the cross member just coming past here. We'll get a bit of a pilot hole going and step it up a couple of times to that 7 16th or 11 mil around about there. All right, now I've got some more clearance. All right, the instructions say 7 16th, but in my case, 11.5 uh, mil seemed to be the best fit, seeing as I didn't have a 716 drill bit. Yes, yeah, so what you're all thinking is right. I should be wearing safety glasses. All right, that's our bolt holes drilled. Now we'll see if they line up and get our bolts in for the cross member. Okay, well, here's a little tip for you. Now, if you've got something like this that needs to go inside a rail and it's just a bit far for your finger to reach, a good little idea is weld a bit of wire onto it. Excuse my welding, it's not really that important. Uh, but yeah, a little bit of wire. You can bend it, put different angles on it, and then you can fit it up inside your rail and hold your internal nut and washer while you're doing the bolt up. So that's just a little tip for you to get inside chassis rails. 
Uh, I've had to do it here. Potentially, you don't have to do it with this kit. Uh, it's just we've got some rail modifications here from the previous four-link kit. Um, but yeah, just a little bit far for the finger to reach. So just put a bit of wire on it, like heavy wire, and away you go. So you might think, what's he doing at the front of the car when we're doing four-link in the rear? Well, something that's overlooked a little bit when setting up the rear of a car can be the influence that the front can have on the rear. The front running much heavier rate springs than the rear due to the weight of the engine, of course. Now, what that can do is actually affect the balance of the left to right springs in the rear if your left to right balance in the front isn't right. So when we were doing the measurements for the car, we measured the front just um, you know, out of precaution. What we found in the front was actually a significant enough height difference to bother pulling it apart to check it all properly, make sure there's nothing going wrong, make sure we've got springs on the right side of the car, if one sagged or anything like that, because we are putting a custom fall link in the back of this. We do have to set up where the mounts go on the diff. So it is important to have the car sitting level. Now that means they're going to just have to pull the front apart, pull the struts out and check out what's going on in the front. Well, that was way harder than it should have been and there's actually something not quite right when the shim washer for the brake caliper isn't between the caliper bracket and the hub so obviously I'm gonna have to when we put this back together I'm gonna have to set up the calipers properly again on the disc rotors I've also noticed our sway bar link rod bushes I had it and rattling around. I think they're also missing a lower washer on this top bush here. I think it goes just in there. So that's something else I'm gonna to have to have a look at. two front struts out at first glance there's not a lot to see uh, for damage we've got the dust boots a bit damaged up here uh, I can see a slight bit of squashing on the rubber uh, the rubber strut top here one thing that I can notice is that there is quite a bit of coil bind marks around the spring this particular one looks like I've got some down to about halfway. I'll show you those coil bind marks. So these marks in here where the two coils have been hitting together. Now to me, that tells me that potentially the spring isn't quite doing its job. These do look like they're slightly progressive, but um, really coil binding is gonna create a rough ride and it's just not going to handle uh, any extra weight that we have in the front with the supercharger and obviously the cast iron block as well. So we may have to look at a different set of springs. 
or we may go to a coilover so we can fine tune the right height at the front to match the back. Let's run through what we've got going on here. You can see we've got the cross member nicely powder coated and that is 100% bolted in now with our cross bolts up the top. We've cleaned up our axle tubes and what we have going on is, if I can just zoom back, we've got the car and axle stands on all four corners and what we've done is leveled the car right out and then in the rear, just with some timbers, we've created an approximate false road level so that we can get the position of the diff in the approximate position. It, um, remembering it's all adjustable for height and various other things, so there is some adjustment in it. But it's good enough for us to get the location of where we're going to put the arms on the diff housing. I'll be the first to admit that I probably missed that bit of a step there, but we have to cut a hole in the rail of a sedan uh, because it doesn't have the shock sitting up inside the chassis rail like a ute does. Uh, so if you've got a sedan doing this, you will have to cut the hole for the top of the shock to sit through. Now it says in there 60 mil hole, uh, I've got a 57 mil hole saw, so you know, hole saw generally cuts just a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this hole, we're going to go just close to the edge here and try not to um, get into the flat area that the panel sits on. So you'll see a big recess in the chassis rail here. So I'm going to try and cut out of that and see if the bracket fits in there. Alright, so our floor has larger holes in it uh, because of the rod shop kit that we previously had fitted. Now, I'm going to try using the uh, supplied chassis rail inserts from McDonald Brothers. If I find that they slop around in the holes too much, I may have to go to, back to a modified version of the rod shop mounting system where it goes through the rail to a plate in the boot. Um, the 60 mil hole to cut in the chassis rail is a bit optimistic considering the bolt is a lot longer than that. So I've cut more of an oval shape. Obviously if you have a U it has this entire section cut out. So I'm sure in the sedan you could go ahead and cut that whole section out as well if you wanted to. So I put our uh, rail inserts in and I'm going to see if our piece fits up as soon as I find where I put it. Alright, so I can get that on there with the McDonald Brothers supplied chassis inserts. So I'm going to run with those for now. We may have some pan hard rod issues with our modified boot floor. Um, I'm hoping not because that is a lot, a lot of work that we weren't expecting. Um, but hopefully it just clears the corner here. So I've got that test fitted up. I'm going to crack on and cut the other side out and get the other side test fitted up as well. And then we'll move on to assembling the coilover and fitting it into here. This kit comes with the Viking coilovers again, but of a much longer length. Now, now you can see we've got 
couple of extra inches of length in the coil over. Like I was saying, there's lots of reasons why that is better for suspension. Um, but I'm not a suspension expert, so I'm not going to start trying to quote things. But there's nothing wrong with these coilovers for the right application. They're just a little bit short for this. We can't really get a big enough spring in there. So, Viking coilovers, I think they're... I think the coilover itself is nine or 10 inches long. Well, accepts a nine or 10 inch long spring. These springs are a 10 inch spring. So that's what comes with the kit. That's what we're putting in the Commodore. So out with these and in with these. Now they're pretty simple to put together. Grab it out of the packet. You can't pull that out just turn all these back to all the way to the negative I always run a tiny bit of never seize now a tiny bit because let me tell you this stuff gets everywhere you'll end up with silver all over the place locking ring that'll be followed by the adjusting ring then you've got this little shim put a little dab on either side now this shim is important because it stops the bottom of the coil spring biting into the aluminium when you adjust it then you get your top Cut, slides in like that, and just wind it up. You can see we've got quite a bit of room if we decide to go with a longer spring for some heavier rate in the back. We've got that option. We've just got crush tubes to put in here, in here, and that is the coil over done. So I'm going to get these onto those top brackets and into the car so that we can work out exactly where they're going to weld onto the diff housing. So you have to make sure the upper and lower links are the same length as the matching one on the other side. Simple way to do that, get your bolt and just pop it straight through all the way on both of the end links and then you know that your links are the same length. Well, I jumped the gun a bit before by putting the springs on the coilovers. Uh, they actually recommend to do it without the springs on there, which realistically makes sense. I spent quite a bit of time getting the diff in the location that we want. And what I've done is I've got myself a center line on the diff, which I can work from. I've got the top arm sitting in there. You can see I've got a center line lined up with the center of the top arm on both sides. And I've also got one which will line up with the center line of the lower arms. I've got those measurements by measuring the distance between the upper pair at the front on the cross member and the lower pair as well and then obviously divided in half and went from my center line there measured out for either now the other thing we've done is tried to get the wheel as close to where we like it in the wheel arch obviously in some applications you can move it either forward or backwards when you're setting all this up but as per the paperwork and as per what we want we're going to set it up in what looks like about the original position and it's about the original position from the measurements we originally took after we've got the top and bottom brackets tacked in what i've done is 
measure the center line of the coil over to the center line of the other coil over and then projected that onto the diff as per my center line mark. So I projected that there and there and we're going to line up the coilover brackets, tack them in and then we can move on to tacking the pan hard bar in. Alright, so we are essentially tacked in. I do have to check the straightness of some of the brackets just to make sure that they're 100% right before we solid weld it. But as the old saying goes, measure twice. Got our coilover brackets tacked in. No binding on the lower coil over there. Got pan hard rod tacked in. That literally just clears everything. Like, whoo, that is tight. So I've got that tacked in, the other coil over mount tacked in. I'm about to try and cycle it and just see if anything looks weird. So we did think we were in the clear with the drive shaft. Uh, we checked unis here and here. And we did know that it had been rubbing the floor in the center here. That was all due to the pinion angle issues that we've been having with that four link setup. What we haven't no hadn't taken into account, we thought we were in the clear, but we've got some serious issues with our center bearing here. It's not just that movement there, it's actually the movement of the entire rubber coupling. So you can see the separation there. We're going to send that off to the drive shaft shop and they will sort it out for us. Well, I've got our McDonald Brothers falling tacked into the Commodore. You can see some of our clearances are pretty tight with uh, some of the modifications we've done before, but I think they're going to be okay. This is the first time I've ever really done anything like this. I've been involved with some four links before, but never actually like fitting one to the diff housing itself. So it's been a bit of a learning experience. Um, might not have come across on the video as to the amount of measurement and uh, research that's had to go into getting the right locations for things. Uh, did get a bit of help, just a bit of guidance in uh, generally where they, the brackets have got to go. But we've got it tacked in, cross members all bolted in, all that good stuff is in the back of the car. Obviously, we still haven't test driven or anything. We have the front suspension that's still got to go in. And obviously this has got to be welded properly and the rear coilovers set up as well. So, if you like what you're seeing, subscribe to the channel, share, comment. We always try to answer our comments. And I'll see you next time where we finish off our forward conversion.